I heard Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, My example and the example of the people is that of a man who made a fire, and when it lighted what was around it, moths and other insects started falling into the fire. The man tried his best to prevent them, but they overpowered him and rushed into the fire. The ignorance of the insect can be shown as an example of humanity. Just as the insect is fooled by the bright lights of a trap that would eventually destroy it, man is also fooled by the bright lights of this world which would also destroy him. Although many men have been fooled in the past, some have managed to run away from the fire before it consumed them. My name's Eamon, I'm 26, and a couple of years ago I was a club promoter, dancer, you know, big on social media, and just everything that wasn't right in life. I, I was blinded by shaitan, like the glitz, the glamour. I think to myself, being what I was, used to be a dancer, jumping in the middle of a circle and having all eyes on you and making people clap and cheer. I thought that was glamour. I thought that was, wow, what a rush. My name's Noor. Uh, they used to know me as Noah. Eamon's my best friend. Been mates with him since high school. Uh, we used to go out together, do everything together, you know, the promotions, the festivals, uh, the whole lot, you know. At the time when you're there, you're enjoying it. The way the environment is, girls coming at you, the lights, the, the music, your heart pounding and you know the goosebumps and you know the really good the really good feeling that everyone wants to search for. And Shaitan did, you know, he beautified everything around me, you know, from women to money to acquiring more. And he made it look so 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 good that you wanted more. And if you took a bit, you weren't satisfied, you still wanted more. And I always felt to myself, I can go out every night, you know, Wednesday to Sunday night and just party and hang out and meet people and socialize, and I'm not hurting anyone. In the actual sense, I was hurting myself. With a lifestyle of non-stop parties, music and dancing, it wasn't long after until both Eamon and Noor soon came to realize the emptiness, hiding behind all the glitz and glamour. Night in, night out, you go out, you think you had a good night out, but once you rest your head on that pillow, you realize the emptiness that's in your heart. You know, you just went to sleep, and everything you just did was a waste. I had a really big night. I think uh, the next day when I woke up in the hotel, I just kind of stood for about half an hour and sat there and thought like, like is, this, like, is this it? Like, is this what life is? You know, like work Monday to Friday, go out on the Saturday. And I thought at that time, there has, there has to be something more to it. The time came and I started to realize to myself, what am I doing? You know, well, what's the purpose of this? Why am I, why am I in this scene anyway from, to begin with? And when I started to realize to myself, I actually sat down, I still remember this day. I just came back from a night out, went to sleep, woke up, and I was sitting in my bed for literally no joke, half an hour at the most, and just wondering what happens when death comes. Death itself. When it comes and it takes you, what happens after that? And then that's when I started to change and started to realize, you know, and I started to attend a lecture or two. At that time, when you make it, you know, when I came to make that decision, I was, um, I was planning to go to you know, one of the really big music festivals that I had been to probably the year before. And um, I had a ticket, you know, I had, it, I had it with me. And I think about a week before, I was getting offers of over $500 for it. Even some of my friends were coming at me with money after they found out, you know, that I put on Facebook or something that I didn't want to go anymore. But I knew, I knew that the only way I was really going to feel like I had let go was, was to burn that ticket. So I, yeah, yeah, so I burnt it. And one day after work, just went into the car park, threw it on the ground and, you know, got a lighter off someone and torched it. You know, it probably the best feeling of my life, best, one of the best feelings I've ever had till today. Soon after making their change, both Eamon and Noor realised that sacrifices were needed to be made and the shaitan was going to wait for them at every doorstep. 
One thing I realized about being in this scene is one thing that shaitan, the devil, threatens you with is, is being alone. You know, he threatens you that if you leave these people that you're with in the circle, you have no one, which is completely false. At one point, it was actually only me and Noor, you know, as, as mates and as brothers. But then through Islam and as we started to practice our deen, we started to realize the brotherhood became bigger. 10 grew to 20, 20 grew to 30, 40 grew into an amount that you can't even explain. You know, sometimes you go pray at another mosque that's completely out of your area and you meet someone that has seen you before, or you've seen them. And they're like, oh, I remember you, brother. You know, you were sitting at this talk or I met you at this dinner or I met you at this fundraiser. It's an amazing feeling because that person's coming up to me just to say hello. He doesn't want money from me. He doesn't want fame. He doesn't want entry into a place that, you know, that he wants to go in. He just wants to speak to me because that's what Islam is about. Love. The sweetness of faith was slowly falling into their hearts. And over the past three years, the fruits of their labor were beginning to pay off. Alhamdulillah, by the will of Allah, the past three, four years have been beautiful for me. You know, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invited me to Hajj in 2011. That was an experience I'll never forget. I, I took my mother as well. And Alhamdulillah, I've been to a few countries around the world to, you know, spread the deen of Allah. Be France, New Zealand, also go around Australia. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us that the best of us in our days of ignorance are the best of us in religion. To understand what this means entirely, we only have to look towards what happens next in their journey. Last year, me and Brother Noor actually went to um, one of the festivals, one of the big music festivals that happen every year. And we went there to call people to, to not go in, you know, to save them. Back in the day, I used to actually call them to come to the festival, to actually enter and enjoy and discounts and so on. And we, you know, we thought that we'd try to redeem ourselves from what we were doing before, you know, like calling people to that environment. So we thought we'd, we'd go to this and, you know, tell people to stay away, you know, try to convince the people what they were getting themselves into because we had been there, you know, and we knew what it was like. We have, you know, we've experienced it before. Ayman and Noor are not the first to make such a change and they surely aren't the last. However, despite their efforts, many Muslims are still sinking into the same traps and falling into the bright lights of this deceptive world today. It, it burns the heart to know that my, my Muslim brother, sometimes Muslim sisters out there, they, they, they're still in this. And it burns me to know that I can't do nothing about it except ask Allah to guide them. Because if we die in this state, a state of ignorance, a state of not caring, what would our ending be? So it's a strong urge from myself, turn to Allah before it's too late. Just run away, run away from the fire because it's not worth it.